Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Becca and today I'm going to be unboxing a big, big stack of Amazon parcels. Fuck. So these have all been sent to me by either my booktube friends or you guys from my Amazon wishlist. I have opened a few of the parcels that I've received in some of my vlog store at the month but I think after the first week in December I decided that I was just going to be collecting all of them. I've had them all stashed under the tree and here we are ready to unbox this enormous stack. So first off, I would like to say a massive thank you to anybody who has sent me anything off my Amazon wishlist. I have 10 parcels to unbox for you guys today and honestly the generosity is overwhelming and I am just so appreciative and so grateful for all of these wonderful, wonderful gifts. I would also like to thank everybody who has donated to my Christmas crowdfunder to help me to upgrade my equipment. So far we have raised £775 in total. That crowdfund will remain open until the end of the year. But a few days ago I did go and put my deposit down on my Mac and hopefully by the time you're watching this video I will have been and picked it up. So thank you so much to everybody who has donated to that and also anybody who has gifted me anything off my wish list. Although providing that Amazon have actually put all of the notes in these packages I should be thanking anybody who has gifted me anything in this stack individually throughout this video. So as this video is going up on Christmas Eve I thought we would have a nice cozy book haul unboxing style video. So let us get started started. I'm very excited. So I was going to just go through the stack in order but the first one that I would like to open is one of the big ones because I think I know what is in here. This one I believe is from Rachel from Rachel Marie's book journey. We'll see when we get inside but if it is then I know what she bought me. So we have two inside here. They are gift wrap and do we have no? That is the question. We do, we do. Love you lots. Merry Christmas babe, Rach. So these are the ones from Rachel and on this one which is the one of the two that I'm most excited to read. She put read this damn book and you better love it or else. If you are familiar with Rach then I believe that this is her favorite book of the year and that is of course Middle Game by Shauna Maguire. So Shauna Maguire is most well known for her Wayward Children series. This was a 2019 sci-fi release from her and I believe it follows twins Roger and Dodger. One of the twins is very skilled with language and words and the other one is very skilled with numbers and and they have been created to ascend to a godlike level or something like that. There is a creator or pet, I wouldn't call them a parent, but there is somebody who has orchestrated this experiment to see if he can achieve something greater by using these twins somehow. I know a few people who have read this and really loved it. I think Books and Lala really loved this and of course Rach really loved it and it has been one that I very much want to read. Second up from Rach, this one is Children of the Whales Volume 9. Now Children of the Whales is a manga series that I started this year and I have been really enjoying. It is a fantasy manga series that features a boy who has the need to write absolutely everything down. Now he lives on the Mud Whale which is this floating island in a sea of sand and all of the inhabitants of the mud whale are completely clueless about the outside world. One day when they are performing a scouting mission to a neighboring island that they float past, they discover the first human that they have ever encountered in the history of their civilization. So as I said, I've been really enjoying this series. It is a lot more brutal than I expected going into it. As you can see, it has a very, very beautiful art style and I don't think from this art style I expected it to be as violent as it is but there are a lot of dark elements in this series that I very much appreciate and I'm excited to continue. I think I'm up to volume five at the moment so I have a ways to go till I get to this one but they are quite short and with them being manga it takes me around an hour and a half to read one of these. So a huge thank you to Rachel for these two. I think next up we'll do uh, these three which are all similarly sized. I've been collecting these for a few weeks now. Originally I had an idea sort of when each individual one was coming in but now I don't really have a clue. So oh 
sorry, got, got a bit excited there. And this is from Kimberly. Thank you so much, Kimberly. You did not need to send me anything. You sent me a couple of things not that long ago. It says, hi, Becca. This is an early Christmas gift from me to you. I have the first volume of this after watching your channel. Hope you have a good Christmas from Kimberly. And this is Orange Future. So this is, once again, another manga. I'm having a very manga Christmas. And I believe that this contains two short stories set in the Orange universe. If you don't know, Orange is a contemporary manga with some sci-fi aspect that follows a girl who receives a letter from her future self saying that if she does not change the path that she is currently on, then a new boy who was just transferred to her class will not be around in the coming years. So I have read the complete Orange series, but I believe that Orange Future is a couple of short stories that take place in possible alternative futures because in Orange there is a lot of discussion about parallel worlds and alternate timelines and things like that. So I haven't heard the best things about this, but I did really, really love Orange. Orange Volume 1 is one of my favourite books of the year. So I really wanted to read this to complete the collection. So thank you, Kimberly. Another manga. This says, Merry Christmas. Decided to get you some more manga for you to read. Love your reviews of them from Maura Dunn. Thank you, Maura. So this one I don't know too much about. And that is We Were Here by Yuki Obata. Now, I have only recently added this to my wish list. A couple of weeks ago, I read I Want to Eat Your Pancreas, which was kindly gifted to me from Kelsey. Because of that, I have identified that I really like contemporary manga that deals with hard hitting topics. So I did a quick Google search. I found a list on Goodreads and I picked a couple of the ones that I was interested in and added them to my wish list. I believe that this is about a girl who falls in love with the most popular boy in school. She he is completely head over heels in love with him but he is still grieving the death of his ex-girlfriend who died the year before. Exactly what I'm looking for. Hopefully it really delves into those difficult topics because yeah that's my favourite niche of manga I would say. So if you do have any more recommendations for contemporary manga with dark topics then please leave them in the comments down below. So that leads me to believe that this one may also be a manga. Let us see. This one is also from Mara, so yeah, it may be another manga. And this one is Dreaming Sun by Ichigo Takano, who is the author of Orange. So I had looked at this previously when I first read Orange to see if there was anything else by Ichigo Takano that I could read. I did come across Dreaming Sun but I did not know that it dealt with any particular sad topics until I found that list on Goodreads featuring a whole ton of sad manga. So this one follows a girl whose mother has died and her father and stepmother are really preoccupied with their new son. So she runs away from home and meets a mysterious stranger who tells her that she can stay with him providing that she agrees to three things. The first of those things is that she tells him why she ran away from home. The second is that she finds his missing key. And the third is that she has a dream and falls in love. So as her mother has died, that does hint at like a sad story here. But everything else doesn't seem that dark or sad. So I'm not sure why this was on the list of saddest manga, but I'm sure I'm going to find out. And as it is by Ichigo Takano, and I have read their work before, I'm optimistic I'm gonna really like this one. So thank you so much to Mara for providing two new manga series for me to dive into in 2020. Next up, we're gonna go for this one because it's oddly shaped and very light. Okay, this is from Claire. Claire actually messaged me and she sent all of her Angels of the Pages a few gifts. And she did say that she picked something off my wish list and then went with something outside the box. There is only one thing in this one, so I think there may be another one from Claire here somewhere. But the note says, Dear Becca, just something a bit quirky to say a big thank you for everything. Looking forward to a great 2020 and more amazing videos from Claire. Thank you, thank you, Claire. Oh, this is so cute. Claire has gotten me a Mary Poppins lip balm duo this was not on my wish list but this is absolutely adorable so thank you so much claire during believeathon i did read mary poppins and i was talking about how much i love mary poppins as a character in the movie and also in the books when i did finally read the first book bev actually sent me a cute little mary poppins makeup bag that is absolutely stunning and now i have two mary poppins lip balms to put in it but these are adorable i think i especially like the yellow one so thank you so much claire for these this one this one's kind of long but also thin so i'm curious 
This one is from Rebecca. Hello, fellow Rebecca. But it says, Happy Christmas, Becca. I've heard amazing things about this and I hope you love it too. This is To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers. So I have to admit, I do not know too much about the plot of this, but I read Becky Chambers' entire Wayfarer series in 2019. And the first book in that series will probably be on my best books of 2019 list. Now, Becky Chambers writes very character-driven science fiction where there is still kind of a plot but it is very much about the relationships between characters, the backstories and the character growth. There is a lot of diversity in there, both easily applicable real world diversity and also kind of imagined diversity in that alien races would represent human races, if that makes sense. So this was a novella that Becky Chambers released this year with literally no buzz. I walked into Waterstones and it was just there. So I did add it to my wish list because I think that Becky Chambers is going to turn out to be one of my favorite authors. And I was very, very curious. So this one does follow a woman who is from Earth and Earth has created some sort of technology or procedure that allows people to change themselves or humans to change themselves. So that it is easier for them to live in space. And our main character is somebody who has done that and she is off to explore a planet. I'm guessing that this is going to have something to do with identity but that's just the vibe I get from the synopsis. I don't know for sure. Okay now we have these two which look like hardbacks. It's from Jade. Merry Christmas lovely. The only reason I picked this from your list is because it has my name in it lol. It, it does have her name in it. I hope you had the best festive season and take some time to relax. Love Jade. Jade very clearly wanted her name on my bookshelf because she has bought me Jade City by Fonda Lee, which is a book that I have wanted for a really long time. I've heard some really great things about this and it's also been shortlisted for the Locus and Nebula Awards, which I must admit, I don't generally follow literary awards. But I think the only other fantasy author that I know has been nominated for a lot of awards is N.K. Jemisin. So this is an East Asian inspired fantasy, which is the main reason that I really wanted it because I do really like those settings. The majority of East Asian inspired fantasies I own are young adults so I have been looking for a few more adult ones to add to my collection. I don't know too much about this and I really struggle to kind of understand fantasy plot lines from a synopsis without any context but this is about Jade which in this world is a powerful stone that enhances a warrior's strength and speed. The use of this stone is limited to the country where it is mined However, a new drug has emerged on the market that allows anybody to harness the abilities of Jade and that starts a war. So thank you to Jade for this and uh, you can guarantee that I will definitely think of you whenever I see this. Second hardback. Oh, that wasn't a hardback actually, so my prediction was wrong. Is this? Let me look. This one's from Claire. Dear Becca, thank you so much for being one of my angels of the pages. You have been absolutely amazing and introduced me to so many new books and the world's best candles by far. Looking forward to a great 2020 from Claire. So this is the other gift from Claire. Thank you so much, Claire. I wanted to read this for a while. Great segue actually, because uh, Jade is the only person I know who's read this, I believe. And that is Witch Sign by Dem Patrick, which actually Ryan is currently reading as well. So this has been on my radar for a while because it is an absolutely stunning cover. I do actually know very little about this one, apart from that Jade and Ryan both like it. But I believe that this takes place in a world that used to have dragons in, but the reign of dragons has ended. However, many years after the end of the reign of dragons, children are still being born tainted by arcane magic or something like that and they are marked with a witch sign. That is all I know about this. I haven't heard a lot about Dem Patrick. When this was released I think it was a debut but I have actually picked up a Dem Patrick book secondhand called The Boy with the Porcelain Blade. So I don't know anything about Dem Patrick and I haven't heard any reviews on any of his books aside from this one so I'm very intrigued to get to this. Next up we have this chunky one. Let's see if I can get a satisfying pair on this. Oh, fuck, I nearly broke a nail. Nope. Nope. So, this one's gift wrap. Oh, this one's from Bev. Thank you, Bev. It says, to Becca, have a wonderful Christmas from Bev. So, this one's a hardback. I can't get in. Ah! 
Ah, the Gilded Walls by Roshani Chokshi. So this is one that received very mixed reviews when it was released. It was compared to Six of Crows upon release, but I think a lot of people went into it expecting it to be a lot more like Six of Crows than it actually was. And therefore they were a little bit disappointed. And this also sparked a discussion on how books shouldn't necessarily be compared to other popular books. So this is a multi-perspective fantasy. I believe it is set in France. Yes, this is set in Paris in 1889. And I believe it follows a diverse group of characters who are on a mission to retrieve a lost artifact. So I was a little bit nervous about this one because of the mixed reviews, but I decided that I did want to read it and try it for myself. So we'll see how this one works out. I did hear it was confusing. Hopefully I will like it because there are quite a few people who really really love this book So I hope that I'm one of them. Thank you so much Bev for this. Now the one that I saved for last I have no idea what it is or who it's from but it is heavy so Let's let's see what's in here. Oh wow this three hardbacks in here wow so this huge box is from linda it says merry christmas becca i hope you enjoy these books i love 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 your channel and wanted to express my gratitude for all your hard work it's greatly appreciated from linda thank you so much linda i'm just gonna right let's let's see what we got so the first one is blood air by emily wen zhao now this i have just received this in the december aluma crate but I am going to keep hold of two copies because I think I'm really going to like this one. This one received a lot of controversy. It was supposed to be released earlier this year in summer, I believe, when the release date was pushed back because of something to do with the representation of certain races in this and how that mirrored things in history, I believe. I don't know because I didn't read the first round of review copies. So this follows a girl called Anastasia who is the crown princess and she is very very dangerous because in this world we have something called affinities and her affinity is to blood. Now I don't know why this makes her dangerous and I'm not entirely sure what an affinity is but I do know that her father is murdered and she is blamed for it and because of that she runs away and teams up with a crime lord to I'm assuming she wants to clear her name and I think there's tones in this of of how the crime lord is supposed to be the dangerous one but she's more powerful and dangerous. I don't know but it sounds morally grey, it sounds bloodthirsty and that is what I need in a fantasy. Next up we have <gasps> The Furies by Katie Lowe. So this is a book that I have read, this is one of my favourite books of 2019 but I had a review copy that I picked up in a charity shop and I didn't have a finished copy so thank you so much Linda. So Katie Lowe is a debut author. This this was her first book and I just thought that it was so so well written. This follows a girl who ends up going to a prestigious private school. I think it's an all girls school and when she's there she's drawn to this enigmatic group of girls that have a very tight knit friendship group. However when she does actually find herself in this friendship group and also a secret society on the grounds of the school she thinks that she may have bitten off a little more than she can chew but she rolls with it because she really likes these girls. Now this book is like a thriller but it has supernatural elements. It's set in the 90s and I like to describe it as the craft book British because we do have some occult magic in here as well. The story starts off with a girl who's been murdered and the story is being told from the perspective of our main character in the present day. We start off with the murder of this girl in the 90s so the main character is looking back on her life and then the bulk of the book recounts the one year up until the point that this girl was found dead so you know at the beginning that one of the main characters is dead don't know which one aside from that it isn't the main character so this has like thriller aspects and witchy aspects it also has a lot of dark academia in it and i absolutely loved it it does also deal with some dark topics we have domestic abuse and sexual assault in here and i thought that the atmosphere and the writing in this was absolutely beautiful so i'm so glad that i have this to add to my collection and then the last book for this video is oh will my cat eat my eyeballs by caitlin dosey so for those of you who don't know who caitlin dosey is she is a youtuber and she is a mortician and she makes really funny videos about death and funeral care and things like that which is really morbid i know but she's all about like death positivity and accepting the fact that we are going to die and the less we talk about the fact that we're all gonna die the more scared of death we are so i first found her youtube channel through natasha from my reader 
Hidden is Odd, and I quickly became hooked. This is Caitlin Doty's third book. I have read her two previous books. All of them are non-fiction and pretty much the only non-fiction books that I read. But I just really love Caitlin and her tone. I mean, I'm sure some, at least some of you guys can relate that death and the thing surrounding death is fascinating and it is just something that we don't talk about so it's something that we don't know a lot about. So the first of Caitlin's books was a memoir called Smoke Gets In Your Eyes about her becoming a mortician. Her second book is From Here to Eternity and that is about all of the different ceremonial practices and rituals surrounding death throughout the world. And this one, Will My Cat Eat My Eyeballs, I believe is Caitlin Doty's answer to 35 questions that she has been asked by her youngest fans. So a few of the questions are listed on the back and they are, what happens if someone dies on a plane? Can we give grandma a Viking funeral? Why don't animals dig up all the graves? And will my hair keep growing in my coffin after I'm buried? So I'm very excited to read this. I have really enjoyed her two previous books. I like how they all surround death and funeral care and things. I know I'm morbid, but they're all very different themes. So very excited for this one. Thank you so much, Linda. Oh, wow, these are heavy. So once again, a huge thank you to the people who have sent me these wonderful, wonderful gifts. I am about to go on Twitter and Instagram and go thank everybody individually thank you so much i am so grateful and you guys are way too generous and spoil me far far too much while it is christmas eve and it is the season of giving i am going to give you a little snippet of information a sneak peek if you will as i have received quite a few books off my amazon wish list this season there will be a square added to the brand new bacopoli board that allows me to prioritize all of the gifts that you guys send me and i haven't filmed my 2020 reading and channel goals video yet so i'm not sure exactly how this is going to work out but i think one of my reading goals for 2020 is going to be to make sure that I'm getting through a decent amount of these books. So that is it for this video. Please let me know if any of you guys have read any of these books and which ones you would recommend that I read first. As I am posting this on Christmas Eve, I hope you guys have a wonderful Christmas. I hope you receive all of the books, you eat all the food and you have the best time. And I should be back on Friday, I believe, with the rest of my December book haul, which will include the books that I've received from friends and family over the festive period and any books that I have bought or received from subscription boxes, etc., in December. But please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you want to. If you head to my description box, you'll find a link to my Goodreads Instagram and Twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those, as well as a link to my bookish body butter and candle website, the Instagram for that, and a 10% off discount code. But that's it from me today, guys. Merry Christmas. Bye. Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate. You say you will go where nobody knows. With guns hidden under our petticoats. We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no.